Hello, hello, Sharon here. Now, if you don't really like working with spreadsheets and you find that they look really confusing and complicated, then you might like to use my list of basic guidelines that I follow myself before I start working with any data. These guidelines are generic, so it doesn't matter if you use Excel or Google Sheets. And for each of these rules, I'm going to show you really quickly how to do them in both Excel and Google Sheets. So let's crack on. So whenever you have a set of data, it's handy to keep any column headers frozen, so they're always visible at the top when you start scrolling down. You might also find it useful to freeze the first column, so if your data set has loads of columns and you're scrolling over to the right, then you'll always see the first column as it will be frozen as well. One of the first things I do when working with data is format the cells correctly. So if you have cells containing dates or currency, for example, then you may find it easier to look at if the correct format is applied. If the data looks like it should be in tabular form, then change it to a table. Google Sheets doesn't really have tables as such, but you can alternate the row colors, which will make it a lot easier to look at. Excel has a handy feature for formatting the cells as a table and does it all for you. I would recommend adding filters to any data, even if you don't think you'll need them. It's quick and easy to add them, and in Excel, they automatically appear in tables anyway. In this digital age, setting a spreadsheet to be printer friendly may not actually be necessary, but it's just one of those things that I always do, just in case. So I just make sure the page size and the orientation is correct. And then if there's any columns or row headers frozen, then I make sure they're repeated on each page as well. If you're working in a spreadsheet that's been sent to you by somebody else, then it's really handy to know if any cells contain formulas. A quick way of doing this is to click on show formulas, which is an option in both Excel and Google Sheets. If there's any data that's actually cut off or not visible, then you can quickly and easily resize the rows and columns by double clicking the mouse in between the two column headers or the two row headers at the side. This is the same for both Excel and Google Sheets. I always find that spreadsheets look less complicated when all the grid lines in the background are switched off, especially if you're looking at a dashboard or several charts and tables on the same page, and it's, it's really quick to switch them on and off. It goes without saying that headings need to stand out from the rest of the data. So make them bold, enlarge them, and give them a different color to the rest of the data. Using named ranges in your spreadsheets makes it a lot easier to read and understand formulas. So for example, giving the name profit table to the range of data will make any formula referencing that range of data easier to read as it will include the name profit table rather than a range address, such as A1 to N4023, for example. And I have a quick bonus tip for you. And that's if you need to explain certain formulas or comments within the spreadsheet, then create a new sheet, call it something like information or instructions and put all the necessary details in there. Then move the sheet tab to the beginning of the sheet and give it a different color so it stands out from all the rest of the sheet tabs. This is especially helpful if you're sharing the spreadsheet with somebody else. Right, I want to know if you follow any kind of list or system yourself that helps you read a spreadsheet a bit more easily before you actually start working in it. Let me know in the comments below if you do. I'll also link to a couple more videos here if you need any help with Google Sheets when it comes to creating invoices or sales and expenses sheets, things like that. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.